Back here on the Bernie and Sitcher, every now and then we get a guest on the line that is uh, just so you. Just, uh, I mean, we get guests all the time. We do four or five a day, but sometimes there are such special people. Olivia Newton-John is one of those people. No doubt. Dedicated her life to, to wellness, and she's been through a couple of very courageous battles herself. But above and beyond that, just the fact that she played such a major role in all of our childhoods, all of us, from her singing hits to, of course, her role as Sandra D on Grease. Just a part. She may be from Melbourne, Australia, but she is a part of Americana, and we love her. So let's welcome her to the Bernie and Sid Show, Olivia Newton-John. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, Bernie and Sid. How are you? Oh, are always great. good when you're on the line. Time. Always good. And congratulations. Uh, we know that, of course, Don't Stop Believing uh, came out in bookstores back on March the 12th. It's already been a huge success around the world. I did get a kick on your Twitter account this morning, Olivia, reading it. You talk about, uh, on the audio book, uh, in, uh, in Don't Stop Believing, that very first screen test with John Travolta for the movie Grease. What was that like? Uh, it was scary, of course. <laughs> I was concerned that um, I was too old. I was all of 29 years old, and now I look back and I laugh at myself. But, you know, it's all <laughs> relative to how old you are, of course. And I was worried that I couldn't pull off uh, a 16-year-old, and so I asked for a screen test. And thank goodness it went really well. It was all nerve-wracking in the beginning, but once we got going, and John and I had a great rapport in chemistry, and it was Right. You were perfect. I mean, you know, they, they, they did send for a couple of people, Stocker Channing, too, who played Rizzo. I think she was worried about looking too old also to be a high school student. There was a, there was a bunch of that coming from the cast. I know you know that. But you weren't the only one. But in the end, it was a perfect mix. All of you were terrific. Yeah, I think it all worked out because none of us, as Travolta said to me, none of us are teenagers, so it'll all work <laughs> out. You know, it's Hollywood. So uh, it was, you know, of course, it was a great experience. It certainly was, Olivia Newton-John. And, of course, uh, your career really took off after that movie. Uh, you had a couple of singles, uh, hits from it. I mean, it was it was that movie that really launched your uh, singing career, no? No, actually, I had quite a bit of success before the movie, and that was one of the reasons I was nervous about doing it, because I had made a, a musical movie in England a few years before. It was supposed to be the next big thing, and it didn't happen. So I thought, oh, no, here we go again. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do this because my music was doing so well. So that's why they had to convince me. And thank goodness it took me to another level, another stratosphere, wow. of course. Yeah. No, right. I mean, you, you, did yeah. win, you, you won four Grammy Awards in your career. You did have a bunch of hits even before that movie. That's right. But it did introduce you, obviously, to a new generation. Uh, especially, oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it made you... And even a bigger story, you did some more movies after that, but it was clear, Olivia, that with all the acting and that, that you're still a singer first. Your true love has always been singing, which you've been great at since you were a young girl. That's correct. I always loved singing. That was, you know, and that's where my heart is, and, and I love to sing. And, you know, the fact that Grease came along and sounded do, and I did some other movies, but singing is my, you know, my favorite. Yes, and of course, your new memoir, Olivia Newton-John, is called "Don't Stop Believing." It's uh, it hits the it hit the stores March twelfth, and uh, it talks about your battles, your personal battles, and you've had some. I mean, cancer being uh, the, the 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 most difficult one, I would imagine. But uh, tell us about the book, "Don't Stop Believing." Oh, "Don't Stop Believing" is um, kind of a journey through my life, telling stories that I I hope are entertaining or interesting or um, you know. Do something. <laughs> and, uh, right. Oh, it's inspirational. It people are enjoying it. So I talk about my childhood and my family that people may not know about. My grandfather was a close friend of, with Einstein, and they communicated a lot. So I came from this kind of academia family. And uh, when I went to England from Australia and my journey through the beginnings of my career with Pat Carroll and up until now and, and all my, you know, things I've gone through in between. Well, not everything. You know, I choose to tell the stories I want to tell. Right. And the ones I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, but listen, but Bernie is right. I mean, you know, he talked about Greece and Xanadu was a big hit for you. We talked about the Grammy Awards and you talked about your grandfather, but he did point out the cancer, and I know that the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center in your hometown of Melbourne, Australia, has become a, uh, a go-to place. You've been very uh, confident, excuse me, you've been very uh, open about your battles here. Uh, so you, in fact, are just on Channel 5 in New York City just a week ago, and, and how it's kind of changed you as a person, the whole cancer battle. Would you tell our audience about that? Yeah, but firstly, 
I, I, I choose not to call it battle because a battle, saying battle and war and fight sets up like this, this visual of fighting and war and mm. it's kind of a bit exhausting for my body. So I choose to say I win over it. I'm going to win over it and I am winning over it. I'm living with it and I'm winning over it. And I think that for me is a, a healthy way. And, you know, like other people live with other chronic things, that's what I'm doing and I'm doing really well. Oh, thank and, God. And, um, you know, everyone goes through stuff in their life and this has been my journey. But the thing is, if I hadn't gone through this, I always think there's something good in everything, in, in something bad that always something good comes out, but in my experience anyway. And if I hadn't had breast cancer, I wouldn't have become involved in, in helping to build a cancer wellness center in Melbourne, Australia, which is now, as you say, a state-of-the-art amazing hospital that is helping a lot of people. So, you know, it, it's been um, an incredible journey. What an incredible journey indeed. And since being diagnosed, uh, Olivia Newton-John, we've heard that you've turned to medical marijuana. I mean, is that, uh, is that a real crucial element in, uh, in your therapy? Absolutely. My, my husband is a plant medicine man, and he worked in the Amazon for about 30 years and bring, brings herbs back from the Amazon. And in the last 20, well, he's actually been involved with uh, medicinal cannabis for about 30 years, so he knows a lot. So he grew... Uh, stuff for me and made me tinctures and that has helped my pain incredibly, has helped my sleep, um, anxiety and now wow. they're discovering, you know, with all the research, there's thousands of papers on cannabis studies for different diseases that it can help um, destroy different illnesses and cancer and so, you know, we're, we're looking to the future with that. I think it's going to be the biggest surprised plant in the world. We've, we've used it for thousands of years and just the last hundred or so, it's been very maligned. But you don't die from cannabis. You die from opiates, as we're seeing so much, sadly, yeah, in, right. in the news. So I feel safe taking it, and I, it's a natural plant, and it's helping me. The memoir is Don't Stop Believing, the, the fantastic Olivia Newton-John here on the Burning and Sit on the Morning Show. Let's not confuse the issue. Olivia is talking about medical marijuana helping out uh, if, in fact, you don't feel well. But, but... Not necessarily partying, but Olivia, you do write in your book about partying with folks like Sammy Davis Jr., Carol Burnett, Steve Lawrence, and Edie Gourmet, Helen Reddy. So this uh, this uh, cute little Sandra D that we saw in Greece, there's been a wild side of Olivia Newton John, hasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I was wild, but I did know those people, and and I was lucky to meet them. I mean, they're you know, in my day, of course, for the younger generation, they probably don't know who those people are. <laughs> but they were the uh, huge stars at the time, and George Burns, and all these people, and Bob Hope, I got to sing with him. So I've had an amazing, amazing career, and very grateful for it. Amazing life. And you're entitled to a good time, uh, Olivia Newton-John. And listen, uh, your hit song, Physical, uh, we heard that you were a little reluctant to release it. Uh, what was the, what, the motivation behind being uh, reticent to release Physical? Well, I, I recorded the song because my manager brought it to me, and I think it was originally intended for Tina Turner, and we had the same manager. She wasn't interested in it, thought it was a little too much. But they didn't tell me that story. <laughs> you mean it, it, was, it, it wasn't a moral thing, like let's get physical, you know, let's have sex? It was more uh, more what you just said? No, no, I'm, I'm just giving you the history. So he brought it to me, and I recorded it because I thought it was a really great song. wasn't really thinking about it in those terms really yeah. and so then later when people are going oh this is cheeky i'm going oh my gosh maybe i've gone a little far so i called my manager and i said roger i think we need to pull it you know because it's just maybe a little too raunchy and he says too late it's gone to radio and it's <laughs> climbing up the charts it's ah. like number five or number one or something crazy like that so so okay okay well then we need to do a video and we need to make it about exercise. That's it, that's it. Yeah. And, of course, that made it even crazier and the director took it in, in a funny direction and it was one of my biggest successes. So two things I was reticent about did really well for me. That's right. <laughs> that's, you're right. That, that is the, 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 the actual moral of the Olivia Newton-John story is if you're somewhat hesitant to do something, Go do it, because you're going to be a Don't big star it. like Olivia. Yeah. You never know. You never know. You've got to take risks sometimes. So when you look back at this brilliant career, again, the great singing, Bernie brought up physical, but so many great songs along the way, and uh, the movies and the Grease success. If you, I know this is such a lame question. It is lame. I'm admitting it, but it's almost obligatory, Olivia. What, what, is, is, what is that one point in your career? What is the thing you're most 
proud of? Oh, gosh. Well, the most proud of is my having my daughter, Chloe, of course. Oh, yeah. In yeah. my life, you know, I'm sure if you have kids, you relate to that. We, bo- have we both have daughters, you know, exactly what oh, you're talking about. All, all three of us, yep. as a matter of fact. Yep. Yeah, and she's a special girl. And um, in my career, you know, I'm proud of, you know, Greece, of course, was a huge thing. Dancing with Gene Kelly and Xanadu was a huge thing. But what always comes to mind is singing for my country for the Olympic Games in 2000. I mean, that was such a huge honor and such a, as you can imagine, such an incredible, indelible image in my brain, walking up that stage with one of my favorite singers, John Farnham. I don't know if you're aware of him, but he's an incredible singer. And um, all these young athletes, and uh, it was incredible. Um, So it always comes to mind. But I'm representing England in the Eurovision Song Contest um, many years before that, but you know, I have a lot of highlights, but you that do. one was really special. And, and another one, yes, yeah, Gene Kelly, uh, you mentioned Gene Kelly, but Dean Martin, uh, you're a big fan, he appeared with him. Uh, I mean, that yeah. that must have been a highlight as well, right? Oh, it was, because, you know, I was this young girl coming from Australia, and uh, I was living in England at the time, but, you know, to be on his show was, like, amazing. He was, he was very sweet. Yeah. yeah, we just saw his daughter a couple weeks ago. So on the way out, when they talk about the biggest star in Australia, is it Russell Crowe? Is it the lead singers of Air Supply? Is it Olivia Newton-John? Uh-huh. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Or, or the guy, who was the guy that uh, he was in the zoo all the time? His daughter's a big star now. He got killed by the, uh, the man array. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes. Or is it him? Which yeah, one is it? They're good friends of mine, Terry and Bindi. And oh, good Bindi's good so family. cute. Yeah, she's great. She's adorable. But you're yeah. the biggest Boy. Australia star, right? You're the one. Uh, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. She's honest. Listen, oh, that is great. The, the book is called <laughs> Don't Stop Believing. It's out in stores now, Amazon.com. Olivia Newton-John's new memoir. It's full of funny stories and some tra- some serious stories as well. But Olivia Newton-John, it's an honor and a pleasure for us to interview uh, you here on the Bernie and Sid Show. Thank you so oh, much. Sweet. Thank you. And also, so the, the listeners know, there's an audio version. I spoke it. So that's, if you just want to download it or... Get the CDs, you can do it that way, too. That's right, the audio book, you can check it out. And check out Olivia's Twitter, by the way, at Olivia Newton-John. She talks about the audio book and some of the stuff inside both the book and the audio book. Thanks again, Olivia. You were terrific. God Thank bless you. you. Nice All right, take you. care. Thanks, we'll Bye. take Bye-bye. All right, we'll take a short break. Bernie and Sid, we're coming right back right after this. Bernie and Sid in the morning.